Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or any time you are coming across this video. If it's your first time and you like what we are doing, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform that we are using to educate and inform the members of the public. At the same time, put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, we do not promote hate speech, we do not promote violence, promote misleading information. What we are here is we educate, inform, and we react to all forms of videos. And also to remind YouTube that a call for self-determination is not a call for... Yes. As was Yinka said, he was very, very surprised that the restoration of Biafra is taking long. When they think and they thought that the, the, the hope is over, today, our prime minister, the bridge, the Biafran government in exile, has sued Nigerian terrorist state to African court. Our prime minister says he is not going to fight like a Gandhi, he is not going to fight like Martin Luther King. He is not going to fight like Kennedy. He is not going to fight like Charles de Gaulle. He is not going to fight like Nelson Mandela. He is fighting like Simon Eba in Joko. And when he he have already designed how to restore Biafra, and the following the Biafra restoration is a template everybody must follow. Thank you for joining us. Write our comment section. Write our comment to know if our gazette is okay. Here, we want to just play the message from uh, Woso Yinka. We put it in our archive. And then we march forward to Musa. Then from there, we will go into analysis. Things are happening. Nigerian government has been defeated. Biafran Liberation Army, Simon Eba and the bridge have defeated Nigeria. Now, the PM and the Biafran government has sued Nigerian government to African court. From here now, you will begin to see African newspapers will begin to carry Biafran matter. We provoke the history and they come up. I've been asking other guests of mine about the civil war, more so because of your age. I would imagine you experienced the civil war, and I know you've talked about it as well in other interviews you've given. What's, what is, what kind of, how would you describe the civil war that Nigeria went through in 1967 to 1970? What's, how would you describe it, Prof? Um, a waste, a total waste, a gross, costly error. It was an avoidable war, it was an unjust war. Uh, and I said so at the time, as you uh, probably know, and uh, I was appalled by the fact that we went to war so easily. I should explain that I believe very much in the right of self-determination. Otherwise, what was independence all about? What's the entire struggle for liberation on the African continent all about? If it is not about the right of people to determine their own destiny, and to find us fighting a war to preserve the demarcations inflicted on us by a foreign, by foreign uh, intruders was for me an act of abject mental enslavement. It was surrendering our will and the readiness to go to war and lose close to two million people to preserve something which was imposed on us by total aliens. It was for me a humiliating fact. It is worse than a crime against ourselves. It was it's just a denial of who we were as creatures of reason, of volition, of self-determination. It made nonsense, in fact, of what I considered we were. So, uh, and the consequences are still with us till today. I, I know you've met some Chief Odumeu Ojuku when he, you met him when he was alive. Ojuku. Ojuku, yes. Yes, the General Ojuku. <clears throat> how, what, what, what was your, how would you describe him? Obviously, he's the one that led the Biafran 
the Biafra war on the Biafra side of, of things. What would you, what kind of book, what kind of a person was he when he was alive, your interaction with him? Yeah. A, a mixture. Uh, he was very conscious of his class. I mean, he belonged to an affluent. He had an affluent father who was a business person. He was sent to the best schools education um, for education. Uh, I can't recall whether he went to Oxford. I think he went to Oxford. And when he came back, we met um, uh, as, a, as young people. He was older than I was, of course. And I, at the beginning, I didn't even like him at all. And that's before I went away. He was, he was very class conscious, yes. you know, rich, wealthy. He drove a sports car. Me, I trundled along <laughs> on my father's infant rally bicycle. I remember yes. very well. Yes. And we used to meet at the same, the same area. We had mutual friends. Yes. But when he came back, and this is, this, this, uh, this happened to so many young people. You can have a very frivolous, uncaring uh, youth and an issue comes up, which you know will affect you and there's a transformation. And so he definitely had a, a sense, he felt a sense of mission, he became totally committed you know, to the Biafran uh, cause. Uh, and uh, he tried to rise to that occasion as fast and as uh, determinedly as he could. I thought for somebody with that background and with that, those challenges, uh, he didn't too, do too badly. He made some terrible, uh, some terrible uh, decisions, I believe. He also had, uh, he had to accept responsibility for the entire uh, scenario, going to war. After Aburi, there was a chance that the country could have moved more, a little bit more apart, rather than stick with the kind of regimentation there. And all the leadership at that time, in fact, were culpable. But in my view, uh, we on the federal side had a greater cult culpability. Yes. So, I mean, you talked of the decisions he made that were terrible, sir. When you Compared that to people like Namdekano today, people and Namdekano, people uh, like Namdekano trying yeah. to resurrect that Biafra spirit. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say, or what would your what would your advice to people like Namdekano, the Yoruba nation, those mm -hmm. people that are agitating for a split from Nigeria? What would your advice or suggestion be to them mm -hmm. from your experience? Yeah. Well, the first thing I have to say is, is that I said at the time, and this was what got me <clears throat> into serious trouble because um, they felt that by making such statement, in fact, it was singled out. Yeah. By making such a statement, I was trying to demoralize the mm -hmm. federal side and actively promoting the Biafran cause. Uh, when I said, and I wrote, I said, you cannot defeat Biafra. I said, and people thought about voting the Biafran cause. Uh, when I said, and I wrote, I said, you cannot defeat Biafra. I said, and people thought I was merely talking of the, you know, they took a very simplistic approach to understanding that. They thought I was talking about the battlefield, on the battlefield. Well, that was involved as well. Because when the people are determined, they are willing to sacrifice anything to preserve their identity. When they feel they are on a righteous cause, it's difficult to defeat them. Yes. Uh, if there's any, shall we say, military defeat, it's only temporary. The real issue remains unsolved. I mean, that's a lesson of history all over the world. Yes. And so when I made that uh, statement, I was saying, do they have a, you know, that notion, that concept, and all that it involved, both, both antecedents and the present, and also, in fact, including the future, seeing what the people who are determined to go on their own, seeing what they could become. That is part and parcel, parcel of, the, of the cause. And when you have that kind of binding uh, combination of different causes, it's very difficult to, uh, to defeat them. And so uh, Kano, Namdi Kano, represents that, uh, that concept. He is one of the younger generation who inherited a burden of... Uh, of defeat, of resentment, and a determination, uh, in their view, not to make the mistakes of even their predecessors. 
they have a new will, they have a new uh, understanding of history. The only problem I had with was the language which uh, Nandi Kanu used over Radio Biafra. I listened to some of it, very uh, incendiary yes. and also uh, disrespectful, I thought, of even his own people. I do agree with uh, that. The, yeah, the language. I, I don't want to go into details, but all you have to do is listen to it. Uh. So what is represented? In fact, I, I use a certain expression uh, in recent contributions. What we fought for, those of us who stood on that side, we fought for a Biafra of conscience. And for me, that's very critical. And people like uh, Namdi Kanu should not or IPOP for that matter, or mass or whatever, should not act against what I call uh, the core of our humanity, yes. which is one of conscience. So, yes, because for me nothing surprised me at all. In fact, it just surprised me that it took so long that the, what you might call, the, it just surprised me that it took so long that the, what you might call, the, the Biafra surprised me that it took so long that the, what you might call, the, the Biafra uh, resurrection to take place in terms yes. of consciousness. Nothing surprised me. Uh, uh, resurrection to take place in terms yes. of... Nothing surprised me at all. In fact, it just surprised me that it took so long. <coughs> yes, Biafrans, you know, after maybe... 10 minutes video and whatever there is one word that used to trigger any any program it surprised him that it took so long for biafran restoration to come to realistic and why did he say this he said it's because the pm now is in charge and today the pm and the bridge government in exile have sued the nigerian government to African court. PM says, uh, Mazen Namdekano says that only truth one he can he will use to destroy Nigeria. And the whole Nigeria and the whole world have seen Mazen Namdekano being humiliated because of law that doesn't exist in Nigeria. Now, the Nigerian government have seen that they cannot do anything again than to bow to their knees. Wosu Yinka now has begun to talk that he, he, he is surprised that it takes so long for Biafra to come again because these are well-determined people. We are marching very, very fast to the picture of why Nigerian government is now crying. Their own case now is in the African court. And from there, the end will sue them to war court. Let us continue just fast. that the, what you might call, the, the Biafra uh, resurrection to take place in terms yes. of consciousness. Nothing surprised me. Yeah. Would you say there are similarities with the Yoruba nation and the way they've been treated? So, for example, you have the way Nam Kano was treated or is being treated. Nam Kano is still in prison, DSL mm -hmm. jail. Whereas you have the Yoruba nation leader. He mm -hmm. was released a few months ago. So would you, would you say there are similarities or differences to these two movements? It's a mistake keeping Inamdi Kano in prison, I believe. Uh, to have, in fact, kidnapped him. There's no other word oh, in yes. the first place. That's true. He had a right to pursue his cause anywhere he wanted. He was never accused of physically bombing any place, yes. killing any place. Language, yes, was incited. No question yes. at all about that. But you don't arrest, you don't kidnap people uh, Buhari seemed to have um, an obsession with kidnapping people. You know, that seemed to be the, <laughs> his trademark. Modus operandi. It's like he couldn't fulfill himself unless it put somebody in a crate and brought them back. And I think that, politically speaking, uh, if they have any real charges against him, well, since he's in their hands, they should try him. All these technical postponements, delays, um, these tactics of just uh, of avoiding the basic issue uh, for me it's just counterproductive <clears throat> yes we are friends we are registering the history you have seen the video but we are registering the history 
these people are African representatives. And they, we will go down to analysis later in the day. We are just putting this thing here. Now, we, we came with another, another thing which African, African leaders have to... Let's talk about the Southeast. We have a peculiar threat in the Southeast. Some people insisting that no one should go to work on Mondays, and they've been killing soldiers, especially. What, how do you assess the security situation in the Southeast um, relative to the capacity of the armed forces? Yeah, you know, the Southeast it has its own challenges because of, again, the nature of the terrain. The terrain plays a vital role. You know, it's thickly forested, so it's, it affords you, uh, somebody can, and then you just be passing by, and then you, so it makes it a, a bit more difficult. Even with your air, in fact, it makes it difficult more with air. Even when you fly abroad, uh, uh, ahead, you hardly can see anything. So that makes it extremely, so we have to fine-tune the training of the troops there to jungle warfare. And jungle warfare has its own different challenges, because you cannot use a lot of equipment they are using. You have to go fully dismounted. And because, again, those are their own areas, a lot of advantages they have that they've built up within. But we are getting so much successes are really very encouraging. Uh, what is going on in that area is purely criminality. And I can tell you, when we've entered the bushes, what you see, I want Nigerians to understand that it is, you see them killing, dismembering, removing parts of human beings. You see a lot of vehicles that they just, went, they just see a vehicle, catch a person and just kill him. There are a lot of uh, graves, all over, scattered all over the places. You will see corpses, skeletons. It is just simple madness. And they do, you know, we will see a lot of rituals. They do a lot of human rituals within those areas. So it is much, and that's why it's important for us to be able to follow up again the leadership, especially this Simon Epa that is in, in Finland, that is causing this a lot of problem by his comments. The federal government has taken that up with uh, the Finnish government on the need to uh, be able to curtail that. And then we're also following through the cyberspace to be able to address those issues. We are seeing people that are also sponsoring them. There are a lot of people that are sending funds to them. We, have, we are aware of that. Uh, we are picking the, we are profiling them at the right time. All of them will be picked. Uh, international organizations, have, uh, especially the U.S. and the U.N., are aware and they are going after them. There are a lot of them in the U.S. and Europe. They are contributing money to what is going on in that place. And so all of them will be both within the local area. So like I said, it's, it's, it's basically acts of criminality. The people are, the, and then the issue of drugs. You know, this is why NDA Little is doing a great job. We need to take drugs out of our youths because that is aggravating what is ongoing on those, those general areas. But we are going, we are working very hard. Uh, troops have gone back in again. We're clearing the whole area to ensure that we get them. So I want to encourage people. And of late, we have had some of them too that are also willing. They are tired. They are also saying that, look, they want to, you know, they want to come, but they have commanders that are making money. You know, this issue of money, that is what is actually, if you watch the, uh, the entire country, all these issues of criminality rolls around money. People feel once they make money, they can get away with anything. And that's what was encouraging them to do. And so that's why it's important for us to encourage, encourage good governance. Because if local governments are working, for example, it makes it a lot easier. We also want to encourage the federal government for us to have a comprehensive census. If you go abroad, you commit an offense, it's 50 chance you'll be arrested. They're not using witchcraft. It's because they have data. We need to build that data, database. And uh, if it is comprehensive, wherever you are, once you are cited or your signature is seen anywhere, it's easier to track who did this, where, and how. So that's why we want to encourage issues of things like uh, having a comprehensive census for Nigeria so that we can, we can, it will assist the security agencies in performing their work. What is the extent of um, the Army's investigation of the killing of his officers and men in Okwama? Okwama, yes. We have just, the, I think the report is just in. We are going through the, the report in daily. It's again acts of criminality. We have cultists. Um, um, those guys are into sea piracy. Uh, into illegal oil bunkering. So they've been able to... Yes, yes, yes. My lovely dear friends, we are keeping up the history we are bring, coming up with. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you see these people? Our message today is the uh, Nigerian government and the, how they are going to fail woefully. Woefully. An African court. They are failing woefully. You must be aware of that. Yeah, so yes. that is why there is all these ridiculous delays. That is what Supreme Court said. I did not jump bail. My home was invaded. That's what he says. Any court considered to try me is committed an act of terrorism. Yes. Very clear. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then come to try that very person is not done anywhere in the world. So, so you must be aware of that. So that is why there is all these ridiculous delays. That is what Supreme Court said. I did not jump bail. My home was invaded. They came to kill me and I survived. They came to Kenya to kidnap me, brought me back to this country and seeking to try me, which the law says cannot happen. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then hope to stand on that illegality to conduct a trial is not done anywhere in the world. I don't have it in my case. Nobody had, there's no exception. No exception whatsoever. That's what the law says. Section 12 of your constitution, what does it say? Any treaty ratified by Nigeria becomes law. It's law. You cannot change it. It doesn't matter what they do. All these shenanigans is just pure rubbish. You never stand. Not with me. I believe in justice and fairness. That's all. Nigeria assigned to a state by not to ambition. So that's what you wrote. You said here, my law that the defendant has now applied for bail. Now, as I've said earlier, bail is a limitation of the, of the court taking into consideration all the conditions laid down in, uh, in Muhammad Abacha v. State. At this stage, I am of the opinion that to make... Yeah, you know, today's program is somehow different. We are already starting to tell you what is going to play in African court. The bridge... The Biafran government, Prime Minister Samuel Neba, has taken Nigerian government to court. Exactly what you see here. The way Nigerian government has lost the case that is in Nigeria, that is how they are going to lose it in African court. That's why we are recording it. So bear with us. If we don't record it, we'll go off. Then we will come back again for analysis. to make or take a stand on the bail application without first hearing and determine the issue that is glaring in the, in the face, which is the absence of the defendant from the court since 25th of April 2017 until he was produced on the 29th of June, my lord, which was exactly what the Supreme Court did. They said that he did not jump bail. These criminals came to my house to kill me. That's what the Supreme Court said. This is in your own, in your own court, my lord. So I cannot understand, my lord, why my trial will be conducted contrary to the constitution of Nigeria that said I must have free and unfettered access to my to my council. It's here. This is the law of Nigeria. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Our message today is bridge the prime minister of Biafran government has sued Nigerian government to African court. And the Mazen Nambekanu says truth is the only weapon one can use to destroy Nigeria, and the truth is the most deadliest weapon one can use to destroy an entity, evil entity like Nigeria. And this thing you see here is the truth the whole world have seen. The law, law is God, God is law. United Nations has freed him as an Nandekano. United uh, 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 African Union has freed him as an Nandekano. All the laws in this world has freedom as a Nandekano. 
the law of God says, whatever you free, whomever you set free in this life, I set free in heaven. Whomever you condemn in this earth, I condemn in heaven. Every law guiding this universe has freed the Mazen and Ambekan. And for this reason, our PM is running very, very fast to African courts. Nigerian courts have sued and they, they, they lost the case in Nigeria. Allah Yejimako made it known that Mazen and there is no possibility of him having a fair trial in Nigeria. Now, they have lost completely in Nigeria. They are now extending to, to African Union, African court. In African court, they will judge before December 2nd, when Biafra will be declared. Then, quick information, quick information before we come for analysis. Quick information is that America, American media is now carrying the activities of our prime minister, Simon Eber, and the activity of the African government in exile. This is very, very good for the government. So, my lovely dear friends, I thank you all for joining now. So, I have to return again for analysis. I want to keep this video like this because of uh, documentary purpose. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, my wonderful people. As you have finished watching this interesting video, please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for please remember to subscribe put on your notification bell share this video and remain blessed